Hello and Namaste to everyone present in this meeting from Indonesia and from India. Today, in this evening of 22nd December 2020, we have two brilliant schools from India and Indonesia participating in this international virtual cultural exchange. From India, we have Kendriya Vidyalaya Janakpuri from the capital, New Delhi. And from the Indonesia, we have SMK Nagari to Jen Pasar, Bali. Pardon me for the pronunciation, please. Let me show you the map of India. This is the map of India, the world's largest democracy. Here you can see there are so many states. Each state has their own culture language and different festivals to be celebrated throughout the country. India being the second largest populated country has so much population that every state resembles a country in terms of population. You can see I have mentioned some of the states having their population equal to some of the countries. Also, you can see on the world map that here are India and Indonesia. To see it more better, we can have this map where you can see the Indonesia on right side. The Indonesia, one of the very beautiful countries of islands and there is India. This is my school. My school, Kendriya Vidyale Janakpuri. You must be wondering that what does this Kendriya Vidyale Janakpuri name mean? It is situated in New Delhi, the capital of India. You can see the picture. This picture is of the front gate entrance of our school. You can see the name is written in bilingual language as we speak Hindi as our mother tongue as well as English. Before I introduce you to the school and students, let me introduce you to four important parts of our school. The very first one is stage. The school begins with the morning assembly from this stage. You can see the playground. The most of the time of the students is spent here in the playground. We have one swimming pool too and one giant library. These four places are the heart of this school. Now, let me introduce you to the name of the school. Kendriya Vidyale Janakpuri. The name actually originates from the Sanskrit origin. Kendriya means central. It actually refers to the central government, the federal government under which our school actually comes. Vidyalaya means school. So our schools are central schools. And Janakpuri is the name of the place in New Delhi where the school is located. And I am Vinay Kumar, postgraduate teacher of chemistry. I teach chemistry to high school students of grade 11th and 12th. And with us here in this meet, class 11th and 12th students are participating from different streams, from science, commerce, as well as humanities. Now, these are the names of the students who are participating with us. Let me introduce you to them one by one. First of all, I would like you to introduce you to two of my coordinators, Vivek Kumar and Rohit Yadav, who have coordinated well among all the programs. So I would request my students to kindly turn on their camera and say hello to you all. Hello, everyone. My name is Vivek Kumar. Hello, everyone. Myself, Rohit Yadav. I am from Senior Most Class. Thank you, Vivek and Rohit. Nakshatra Sharma and Simarjit. These are also seniors. 
from grade 12th hello friends my name is nakshatra hello guys i am timarjeet thank you now kanishka pande and ranjita kaur seniors from grade 12th hey buddies ranjita kaur here thank you now jayant kumar and aditya sai these are the two juniors from grade 11th the only two juniors among us and these will be presenting the topic of festivals and foods jayant aditya hey everyone i am jayant hello everyone i am aditya sai and we have another seniors jasmine and simran who would be presenting on the topic arts and monuments hi everyone i'm jasmine hello everyone this is simran thank you so much jasmine and simran now before starting ahead i would like to welcome you formally through one small video here is the video and i would like to welcome you all with this video goodness unlimited a place of beauty uncharted joy unbounded blessings freely granted to india the trip we always wanted hey. jesus krishna durga nalla vidhaura masta divinity is so the strip a land where all the worship find your freedom in this wisdom mind and body get sorted Feel when I go about it hey Thank you. I I'm sure you must have liked the video. There is one short video where my coordinators have made this Google Earth video for you all to show you a small journey from my school to your school. I'm sure you would be liking it. So here is the video for you all. This is New Delhi in India and we are directly reaching to my school our school in New Delhi this is Kendriya Vidyalaya Janakpuri and from India let us move to Indonesia now find to see your school i hope that uh, we went to the correct school so with all this introduction I would like to hand it over to Ms. Putu and welcome again to all of you all in this virtual meet. Ms. Putu, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fine. Okay. Uh, now I will present. Yeah.
Can you see? Absolutely, we can see. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Finay. We have uh, give a chance to us, uh, to me actually, and my student to do the International Future Culture Ex Exchange. Yeah? Okay, uh, before I start, uh, I will in I will give you the video. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, uh, before I show the video, I will introduce my student. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Yeah, share screen. Can you see? Oh, yes. Okay. You can see the PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Uh, I will introduce my student. Can you see the PowerPoint? Okay, for the next minute. This one. Uh, okay. Can you see, Mister? Absolutely, we can see the uh, first slide of the presentation, yes. and it's beautiful. Yes, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Mister. Pine Kumar from the Kendria Fidlaya Fidlaya yeah, Janak Puri, New Delhi. Yeah. I'm from okay. I will introduce myself. My name is Putututi Ariani. I'm is a teacher in SMK Negeri Dua Denpasar, yeah. Vocational High School 2 in Denpasar. Um and next, wait a minute. Okay, this is a map of Bali, yeah, Indonesia. So uh, Bali is a part of Indonesia. Yeah, this is our map, and we in Denpasar. Yeah, here Denpasar is the capital city of Bali. Yeah, and then this is the map of Indonesia, and we are here. Yeah, it's a very small island. Yeah, here is very small island uh, from all the Rameni and our capital city in Jakarta is here, yeah, in Java, Java Island. Uh, here, Jakarta is here in Java Island. Okay. Yeah, this is our vocational high school too, then Pasar in, in Bali, Indonesia. Yeah, this is uh, our... Okay, this is uh, the participant, uh, my student, okay, is Kema. You can introduce yourself, Kema. Hello, everyone. I'm Kema. Yeah, and Amel. Hello, everyone. I'm Amel. Okay, next is Teguh. 
Okay, introduce yourself, Teguh. Hi everyone, I'm Teguh. Okay, and Yogi. Hi everyone, my name is Yogi. Okay, and this is the next is Tasha. Hello everyone, my name is Tasha. Okay, and next is Najwa. Najwa, you can introduce yourself. Okay, next. Hello everyone, my name is Najwa. Okay, thank you Najwa. Next is Nisa. Hello everyone, my name is Nisa. Yeah, and next is Amari. Hello everyone, my name is Amari. Yeah, and this is Kire. Hello everyone, I'm Kire. Yeah, Dila, you can introduce. Hello everyone, I'm Dila. Yeah, so that is uh, about the Okay, now uh, before we start, I will give you a video about Bali. Yeah. Bali is well known as Island of Deities or Island of Thousand Serpents. The enchantment of Bali is everlasting as it is one of the beauties in Indonesia. Bali has many green grass fields that won't be good for sightseeing, many picturesque beaches, and the people who live socially and culturally in peace. The social aspect of Bali's people and the cultures are inspirable from Hindu. The Balinese use classifications and caste comprising Brahmana, Satya, Vaishya, and other people's people. Most of the Balinese belongs to Java caste. Social cultures of Bali are the heritage of the ancestor descended from generations to generations.
Okay, that's uh, about Bali. And now, okay, now I will show to you about uh, our school video. Yeah, it's about our school. Ibu kota Provinsi Bali merupakan pusat perekonomian dan bisnis di Bali. Oleh karenanya, ketersediaan tenaga kerja yang terampil dalam bidang bisnis dan manajemen sangat diperlukan. SMK Negeri 2 Denpasar merupakan sekolah menengah kejuruan bidang bisnis dan manajemen. Hadir untuk menghasilkan lulusan dalam bidang bisnis dan manajemen yang profesional, mandiri, berakal mulia, serta peka terhadap pelestarian lingkungan dan budaya. Selamat datang yeah, di SMK Negeri 2 Denpasar. SMK Negeri 2 Denpasar tidak terlepas dari partisipasi aktif seluruh warga sekolah dengan bimbingan dari Kepala SMK Negeri 2 Denpasar sehingga terwujud kesatuan visi dan misi untuk kesuksesan SMK Negeri 2 Denpasar.
Okay, that's all about uh, my school and about Bali. Okay, no, um, Mr. Fine, we can start. Thank you so much, Miss Putu. Now, let us start with our cultural exchange. So, here are the topics of our international virtual cultural exchange. The a cultural exchange would be on two interesting topics. The first topic is arts and monuments in the country. And the second topic is festivals and foods in the country. So let us start. To begin with, the first theme of arts and monuments, let me invite the Indian students to present over the theme arts and monuments. Are you guys here and ready to present? Yes, sir. Session so, Simran will be presenting. Okay, so Jasmine and Simran, over to you both. Hi, everyone. I'm Jasmine. And my partner is Simran. We'll be presenting on the topic Monuments and Arts of India. Okay, let's start. India is one of the most beautiful countries in the world and is known for its fascinating culture and amazing heritage also. Today, we'll be showing you the Monuments and Arts of India. In India, the monuments uh, are a speaking stone for the rulers who commissioned them. I mean, the rulers who were in charge of building them. And it also shows the brilliance of our artists who were responsible for building the uh, monuments. Let's take a look at some of the most breathtaking monuments of India. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the Taj Mahal. It is also one of the seven wonders of the world. It was commissioned by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan to house the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It is built entirely out of white marble, as you can see in the pictures. Next, I would like to move on to the India Gate. India Gate was built as a war memorial. It is situated in the capital of India, New Delhi. It stands as a memorial for 70,000 70, soldiers who died during the First World War, and it was designed by Sir Edwin Littens. Next, I would like to move on to the Qutub Minar, also situated in Delhi. Uh, it was commissioned by the ruler Qutub Uddin Aibak. It took 28 years to be built. Its height is around 72.5 meters tall, making it the tallest minaret in the world. It contains a spiral staircase of 379 steps. Next, we would like to move on to the Hava Mahal. The Hava Mahal was commissioned by Maharaja Sawai Pratap. It is also known as the Palace of Breeze. It has 953 small windows, and which helps the wind keep um, blowing inside the palace. It was built as a summer retreat for the Rajput rulers and their families. Finally, the Red Fort. The Red Fort is also situated in Old Delhi. It was also commissioned by the Emperor Shah Jahan, who built the uh, Taj Mahal as well. 
Uh, it's built entirely out of red sandstones, as you can see in the pictures. Its common name is the Lal Kila. The location of these monuments on a map of India, the India Gate in New Delhi, the Qutub Minar in Old Delhi, the Red Fort also in Old Delhi, the Taj Mahal in Agra, the Hava Mahal in Jaipur. I would like to move on to the arts of the country now. India is a country. One minute. I'm so sorry. India is a land where classical melodies merge seamlessly with mesmerizing mosaics of executive paintings, ancient weaves, and other handicrafts. Each state has its own divine dance forms, fascinating festivals, and sculptures. Let's take a look at the prominent arts of India. The dance forms. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you about the Bharatnatyam. It's a temple dance of Tamil Nadu. Next, the Bihu, a native dance to Assam. The Manipuri, a dance of Manipur. It is also known as the Jagoi. The Kathak is a dance uh, traditionally uh, done in the regions of North India. The Odissi, done in Odisha. The Kadagali, a traditional dance drama native to the uh, state of Kerala and the Bhangra, a traditional dance of Punjab. take a look at the these dance forms and their uh, states the bhangra of punjab in the north the kadagali of kerala down south right next to it is the bharatnatyam from tamil nadu odissi from odisha the manipuri from manipur and the bihu from assam
Now let's move on to the musical forms of India. Owing to India's vastness and diversity, Indian music encompasses numerous forms. Just to mention a few, there is classical folk, soft rock, Bollywood to Indian pop. Let's take a look at these music forms. I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened. But in conclusion, I would like to say the monuments exhibit the glory of India and throws a light on the periods they were built in. Indian art has its own unique design and manifests our amazing culture. Altogether, India has its own unique culture and magnificent monuments. It shows both the skill of our people and the history of our country. 
I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jasmine and Simran. It was beautiful and it was lovely to watch such melodious songs and different uh, monuments and arts which you presented to Indonesian students today in this virtual international meet. Now I would like to ask if any of the Indonesian student and Ms. Putu have any query on the presentation, they can ask. Okay, the student, maybe you have question for the presentation by Jasmine just now. Okay, one of you. No, miss, thanks. Have you, have you been there? So I guess there is no question. So let me hand it over to you, Miss Putu, so that uh, we can see the beautiful presentations from your student. So I hand it over to you, Miss Putu. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Finney. No, uh, my student Yogi will be presented. Mon Yogi, you can open your camera. Okay, introduce yourself first, Yogi. And then so, hi everyone. Good afternoon. Let me introduce myself. My name is Putu Yogi Pradiana Putra. You can call me Yogi. Now I am the student of Vocational High School to Denpasar with my major is Tourism Department Grade 11. So today I would like to explain about one of the monuments in Bali, Indonesia. Bali. Bali is one of Iceland in Indonesia with uh, many cultures in Bali. So, today I would like to explain about Monument Ground Zero Bali. Welcome to Monument Ground Zero Bali. Monument Ground Zero Bali, this monument is just a memorial of incident in Kuta. The Bali Monument the Bali Bombing Monument is a building that reminds tourists and the world community of the heartbreaking event that occurred in 2002. 18 years later, this monument has become a, a historical monument with a high attraction for tourists. At a local of origin tourists, on 12 October 2002, the Kuta Inside incident was bloody due to a frightening tragedy namely the explosion of bombs in several places, including Paris, Pub, Sari Club, and near the U.S. consulate. At first glance, the concept of Trihitakarana in Bali, which is part of human harmony with each other, was simply erased by the detonation of this bomb. This incident is difficult to erase in memory because the Bali bombing tragedy to be present in Kuta tourism result in the death of 202 people, namely 38 Indonesian citizens, 88 Australian citizens, and six independent citizens, and seven American citizens. Then, later this bloody incident was known as the Bali bombing I because the bombs occurred twice. So the next is we go to the location of the Monument Ground Zero Bali. The location of the Monument Ground Zero Bali is on Lagian Street before the Ground Zero Monument was built. This place was the location of Paddy's Pub, which is located in front of Sari Club. Paddy's Pub itself is now being re relocated further so the right in front of the Ground Zero Bali Monument. The, the name Paddy's Pub has no chain to Paddy's Club or better known as Paddy's Relic. At present, the Bali Bombing Monument, which was inaugurated on October 12, sorry, 12 October 2004 by the region of Badung, who was then held by Anagungura Okoratmadi, 
has become a tree spot in Bali that attracts many trees to visit. Many of those who visit Bali place the Ground Zero Monument as their first tourist destination on the island of the gods, which you may also do. Next, we go to the time upon the monument Ground Zero Bali. Friends of Traveler, the operating time of this tourist center in Kuta Bali is open 24 hours every day. So whenever you can come here, you can enjoy with the view. So I suggest you guys, if you want to uh, visit Bali, visit Monument Grand in Bali, I suggest you to visit in the night time. So you can, you can enjoy with the view. You can see many light on the road. The next is facility in Monument Grand in Bali. In this area, there are lots of shopping centers ranging from souvenir shop, malls to mini markets. Not only that, Legian Street Bali is also famous as one of the most popular culinary spots in Bali with many restaurants and cafes there. In fact, there are also places to pamper yourself such as spas to offices like banks and others. Being the center of the most popular tourist activities in Bali, the Kuta area is also known as one of the favorite places for tourists to stay. Therefore, do not to be surprised in the vicinity of Legian Kuta Street, Bali, we will very easily find many lodging places, starting from Jasmine Class, in that over cheap rental price to a number, a star hotels a high price. So, next. The next is we will go to the building. The building of the Bali Bombing Monument was built on the idea of Nyoman Rudano, the monument was complete in 2003, a year after the Ground Zero bombing was established and was named Panca Benua Monument. And finally, on 12 October 2004, it was inaugurated by the region of Badung at the time, namely Ana Agungura Okoratmadi, and given the name of the monument for a human, humanitarian tragedy of the monument. In few of the occurrence of this tragedy, we can witness and hear sad and tragic stories from witnesses who are still alive and from residents around the Ground Zero location. In the host of some residents finding parts of the victim bodies and before cleaning ceremonies on the rituals as held according to Hinduism, the ceremony is Macharu and Laspas because before the cleaning ceremony is held, sometimes people can hear some people screaming for help and crying was sure is not clear. So for your information, guess, the monument is just only for just a memorial in an incident. So the next is I have a some picture about the Bali bombing monument the humanitarian tragedy of the in 12 october 2002 next so you can see guys in the picture the bali bombing tragedy in 12 october 2002 that's very scary Next. So the next is I have a some video about the Monument Ground Zero Bali. I'm so sorry, I think the connection of the video is the really bad. So I think that's all about me, the Monument Ground Zero Bali. Uh, I'm sorry if I make a mistake. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day, guys.
Okay, thank you, Yogi. Uh, we'll be continue by Komang Tegu. Hi, good afternoon all. My name is Koman Teguh uh, Syadnya. You guys can call you guys can call me Teguh. I'm 16 years old. So I'm here now to presenting the monument, one of the beautiful monument in Bali, the exotic Balinese architecture, Bajra Sandi Monument. So Bajra Sandi Monument is a Denpasar major landmark and nowadays becomes a popular tourist attraction in Bali. Therefore, if you are looking for the best thing in the best thing to do in Denpasar, Denpasar is a central city of Bali, uh, you should visit the Bajra Sandi Monument. This is the Bajra Sandi Monument. If the monument is located in Renon, area which is the center of the center heart of Denpasar city if Jakarta the, capi the capital city of Indonesia has a monas which is a national monument Bali has Bajra Sandi they both aim as a memorial monument monument the architectural design of the Bajra Sandi monument represent a Balinese architecture design with many unique carvings and sculptures. The architect of this monument is, is Insinyur Ida Bagus Gede Yatnya, who won the architectural design competition for the memorial in 1981. The memory, the monument was built to dedicate the struggle, the struggle of Balinese people during the war against the Dutch colon, colonial. The aim of the Dutch colonial invade and wage war on Balinese people is to make an occupation of Balinese island, of Bali island. The construction of Bajar Sandi began in 1981. However, the building process stopped and continued in 1987. The name Bajar Sandi comes from the words Bajar, Bajra and Sandi. Bajra means bell and Sandi means indicate as holy. When you see the monument building shape, the shape does look like the holy bell used by Hindu priests while chanting a mantra in a prayer ceremony. So this is the Bajra. It looks like Bajra, yeah. And built on a public public park. The Bajra Sandi Renon monument stands on Niti Mandala Renon public park. So this is this is the Bajra Sandi and this is the Niti Mandala Renon. The public park. And the local called it as Lapangan Renon or in English Renon Field. Niti Manala Renon used daily by the people of Denpasar City as a place to exercise. For example, jogging, playing football, volley, basketball, yoga, and many more. For your information, Renon area is the Renon area also is the Bali government office area. So this is the Niti Mandala Renon that you see right just now. And this is the Bali go governor office. This is also the uh, Bali governor office. And let's take a look to the inside of Bajra Sandi. So on the first floor, there is a fish pound. You can, as you can see here, there is a fish pound. Uh, handicrafts, library, administrative room, exhibition halls, and well-maintained 
toilet for visitors. In the center of the building, there are four steps whichever you can use to, to climb to the second floor. So this is the stairs to go to the second floor. In the second floor, you can see of in on the second floor of the monument is a museum that represents the Balinese people's history from pre prehistoric times. The development of civilization, the history of Bali Kingdom Kingdom development. The story of Balinese people's struggles to gain independence depicted in 33 dioramas. Therefore, this monument is also often referred to as Bajra Sandi Museum. And this is uh, the view that you can see from the second floor. While on the uh, while on the Bajras on the second floor, there is a there is a spiral staircase to get to the third floor, and it feels like a little dizzy while climbing it. And we go to the last floor, the third floor, the highest floor in Bajras Sandi. So on the third third floor of the monument building there is a large room and surrounded by glass windows as you can see here uh, you can see a, a 360 degree of view of Denpasar city and its surroundings surely you will not see square capers in Denpasar because the government regulation banned building with higher than 30 meters Next to the location. The location address of Bajar Sandi dan Pasar Museum is on Jalan Raya Puputan or Puputan Street, number 142, 42 dan Pasar, Panjer, Panjer dan Pasar, Bali. If you are coming from the Sanur area, it only takes 15 minutes. However, if you are coming from Kuta Beach area, then it will take 50 minutes by cars to make to make it easier to find the location of Bajra Sandi then Pasar Museum please use the Google map and the opening hours the next question is is Bajra Sandi daily open daily Bajra Sandi Museum open daily but close on government holidays therefore before you visit and find out before you visit Find out with your local guide or your hotel concierge if there is a state holiday on the day that you want to visit the Bajra Sandi. Also, you need to pay attention to the opening hours. From Monday until Monday until Friday, 8.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, which is weekend, 10 a.m. until 4.30 a.m. Is there any admission fee to enter Bajor Sandi dan Pasar Monument? Yes. There is an entry fee that you need to pay to go inside the area of the monument. However, there is no entry fee for the public park Renor, or Renon or for the lapangan. If you just want to exercise without going to Bajor Sandi, so you, you didn't have to pay. This is the list of Bajor Sandi Monument and entrance fee for, for adult it's 50,000 Indonesian rupiah per person and kid under 17 years old it's 25k per Indonesian rupiah per person where to get the budget Sandi entrance fee ticket the the entry fee ticket counter counter is located at the main gate of the at the main gate of the budget Sandi it is quite easy to get the entry fee ticket without a long way way. Please note, Bajra Sandi is not a Balinese Hindu temple. Therefore, there is no uh, dress code such as to wear sarong, a sarong or to enter the area of the monument. And the last is... The best way to get to the monument. I suggest you to use a car rental or 
plus driver service in Bali. Surely there's a reason we advise I advise you to use car rental service plus a driver in Bali. By using car central car rental plus driver service in Bali with minimum usage for 10 hours, then you can visit many Bali attraction uh, instead just go to the budget Sunday. Besides that I also have the last the video. Short video, 30 seconds of Bajra Sunday. I think that's all. My name is Tabu. Okay, I give it back to Mr. T. Okay, thank you, Tabu. No, we'll continue by Dila and Kiri. Okay, Dila first. That's about the monument. Now we'll be tell by Dila about our art. Yeah. So, hello my friends, um, my name is Niputila Janawigirnyani, you can call me Dila for short. I'm from Vocational School to Denpasar, I'm from Accounting Department, Grade 11. So, here I will show my presentations about Kuningan Day. Next. Next. So, yeah, we have three topics here. The first one we have to know about what is Kuningan Day. And the second one, what preparations do we need? And the last one is unique traditions in Kuningan Day. Next. So first of all, let me tell you about what is Kuningan Day. Kuningan Day is celebrated 10 days after Gaulungan. Same with Gaulungan, Kuningan is celebrated every 210 days or every six months in Balinese calendar, which one month consists of 35 days. The exact day of our Kuningan is Sanis Charakliwon Wuku Kuningan. In this Holy Kuningan Day, it is said that Ida Sangyawidi comes to the earth to give his blessing for human race. Balinese Hindu people believe that the ceremony must not pass midday before the God and the ancestral spirits go back to heaven. Next. Yes, Kuningan is the sequence of Galungan celebrations, which is 10 days before Kuningan. There are also some specific ornaments in Kuningan. The first one is Andongan. Andongan is a symbol of offering to Sang Hyang Wigi. Andongan, Andongan also means rice. And the second is Tamyang. Tamyang is a symbol of danger deference. And the last one is Column. Column is a symbol of resting place for Ida Sangyang Widi, the gods, and also the ancestors. Next. In Kuningan Day, during the week of Kuningan, Balinese people will not run any program as all the Balinese people are too busy with the preparation of this big event. For you as a foreigner, it is the perfect opportunity to go around the island to see all the beautiful decorations of the streets and temples. Next. And yeah, 
the last is I have some videos about interesting things in Kuningan Day. There's also a unique traditions called Mukhotek. Let's watching the video. Um, sorry, I think the video is cannot run. So I think that is enough for my presentation. Thank you for attention. Nice okay, thank you, Dila. No continue. Bye, Kiri. Hello everyone. Uh, so before I start, uh, hello everyone. So before I start, let me introduce myself. I'm Kire Fozia Rewan. I'm a student of Functional Senior High School to Pasar. Now I'm grade 11. Next. So our topic today is Galungan Day. Next. So what we are going to talk is the definition of Galungan Day. The second is the most important equipment that we need in the Galungan Day. And the last is the sequence of ceremonies Galungan Day. Next. Okay, the first is the definition. So what is Galungan Day? Galungan Day is a one of big holidays in Bali to celebrate the victory of Dharma, kindness over a Dharma or badness. Galungan Day is celebrated every 210th day according to Pawakon calendar system. And the Galungan Day will be held every six months. Next. And the second is the most important equipment that we need to celebrate Galungan Day is Panjor. So what is Panjor? Panjor is a tall bamboo decorated with coconut leaf with Sangha Chuchu. And the Sangha Chuchu is a small triangle box and a base that is used to place the offering during curtain religious celebration in Bali. And I will tell you the philosophy of Panjor. Penjor is meant to symbolize a mountain. The higher is it, the more humble we become. Next. And last is the sequence of Galungan Day. We need to do the first is penyabakan. The second is penyajaan. The third is penampahan. The fourth is the Galungan Day. And the last is humanis Galungan. Next. The first is penyabakan. Redite or Sunday or three days before Galungan is the day when some Uta Galungan comes to the earth to tempt human to doing Adharma. In this day also, the ladies will start to stock up fruit for offerings, which is called as Nyakap. And the second is Penyajaan. Soma or Monday or two days before Galungan is the day when some Buddha Dungulan comes to earth tempting human to devise even more. At this time, people will start to make jaju or which is also called Nyajang. Next. The third is the Penampahan. 
Anggara or Thursday or one day before Galungan is the day when Sangbuta among Kurat strongly tempt humans to do fights more than before. We are expected to be able to defeat the power of those three Buddhas. And it's done by slaughtering pig or also called Nampa. They also make lawar, sate, and itch. Why we should slaughtering pig? Because pig is a symbol of laziness, so slaughtering pig could also mean killing laziness natures. In the evening, Kanjur is plugged into the ground in front of everybody's house. Next. Uh, the fourth is the Galungan Day, Buddha or Wednesday Day is a celebration day of humans' victory over the kings of evil from themselves and from Buddhas or evil creators. All people will, play, will pray in public temple or house temple to express their gratitude to Hyang Widi or God. Next is Humanis Galungan. Raspati or Thursday or one day after Galungan is the time for doing Dharma Santi. Dharma Santi is visiting families and also relatives. And I think that's all of my material about Galungan Day. I'm sorry if I did something wrong. Uh, nama saya Imade. This the videos of dari Mas enam uh, bulan sekali kita itu merayakan Hari Raya Galungan bagi umat Hindu di Bali. Maknanya kita mengucapkan banyak-banyak terima kasih kepada Tuhan Yang Maha Kuasa. Itu ciri khas Galungan pasti ada yang sebutkan penyor. Dari sana kita itu sudah melihat, oh kok ada penyor? Oh berarti Hari Raya Galungan. Hari Kemenangan Dharma menurut agama Hindu yang ada di Bali. One day before Galungan, sudah pasti kita itu melakukan upacara mecaru untuk tidak diganggu oleh yang sebutkan evil spirit. Saya, Imari Birgel, mengucapkan selamat hari raya Galungan dan kuningan. Mudah-mudahan Anda diberikan anugerah panjang umur. Oke, okay, thank you Dila and Kire. Now back to Mr. Vinay. Thank you so much, Miss Putu. It was a wonderful presentation by all the students. The detailings and the um, small, small details on which your students worked were evident. And I can see that they have really worked very hard to present this much content in this uh, virtual meet. It was not easy, absolutely. I want to congratulate them and I appreciate the patience which they showed in presenting all this beautiful presentation. Now, I would like to move ahead with the second theme. And here is the second theme on your screen. Here it is. The second theme is foods and festivals in the country. And to begin with, I would like to invite the Indian students, the two juniors, Jayan and Aditya Sai, to kindly present over this theme of food and festivals. Guys, are you here with us? Yes. So, over to you, Aditya and Jayan. Hello to one and all present here. I am Aditya Sai and he is my colleague. Yeah. 
एंड ही इज माई कलीग जैन वी आर फ्रॉम द जूनियर सेक्शन ऑफ हाई स्कूल एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेल अबाउट सम फूड एंड फेस्टिवल्स इन आर कंट्री फेस्टिवल्स आर लार्जर दैन लाइफ सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ वेरियस थिंग्स दे आर कर एट रेगुलर इंटरवल एंड हेल्पिंग इन द ब्रेकिंग द मोनोटनी ऑफ लाइफ फर्दर मोर दे गिव यू द चांस टू सेलिब्रेट द लिटल एंड बिग थिंग्स इन लाइफ फेस्टिवल are the carrier of peace and joy in communities all nation of the world have certain religious and cultural festivals however india is one of the largest country to celebrate numerous of festivals Jen, uh, your mic is off, dear. So you must be so. now let us move to the foods in india talking about indian food like its culture it is varied and is quite popular across the world indian food is a blend of varied herbs and spices which make every dish quite unique and special though most of the countries love indian food has it is considered to be quite spicy when compared to other cuisine most of the time when we think of indian food all we can think is the wide variety of food available be it the sweets or the rice dishes curries or the snacks indian cuisine has it all indian food is delicious and quite exciting and includes the use of various herbs and spices also another thing that pops up in my mind is the wonderful spices that are used in cooking now let us move towards the festivals and their related exotic food in india here are some pictures of the food that we eat in our daily life Diwali Diwali it is the festival of light and signifies the victory of good over evil Diwali has line of charity it falls in the month of Kartik according to Hindu calendar almost every household and street on Diwali is decorated with lamps and lights and lamps and light it, it is to celebrate the return of Lord Ram Sita and Lakshman after 14 years of exile when the people welcome them with the light of light oil lamp that's why it is called the festival of light people worship lakshmi the goddess at night children buy toys and crackers it is the most famous and joyful celebrated festival diwali is famous for its mithai or sweets during that day each and every household during that day each and are freshly made snack ranging from ranging from jalebi to gulab jamun shakarpali to kheer gajar ka halwa to kaju barfi and many more along with this savory dishes are also served here are some picture related to festival diwali Holi Holi is the festival of color and marks the arrival of spring. Holi is one of the biggest festival of Hindus. It was in the month of Phalgun on full moon day according to Hindu calendar. It is the festival of color, love and unity and celebrate the victory of good over evil. The festival is celebrated with great fanfare in India. After find an excite day The evening is spent in restaurant when people meet friend and relative and exchange sweets and create the festivities although traditional holy dishes vary from region to region there are some must which can be found even in the remote areas of country among the listed thandai it is a sweet creamy milk drink that the drink is combination of different nut and exotic spices like cardamom rose
petal and fennel also can't miss gujia pakoras and daiwara there are some picture related to festival diwali or holi over to you jan now let us move to some more festival um, it is one of the biggest festival of the muslim community living in india it is celebrated to mark the end of the month of ramzan muslims fast in the month of ramzan and at the end of the month they celebrate with feasts to thank the god for whatever one have Muslims around the world make great preparations like buying new clothes, eat prayers are done in of their friends and relatives, and create the festivities. And exchange sweets. Children are often given gifts called Eid by their loved ones. The Eid fast is broken by a special dishes like sevain, biryani, egg halwa, sheer korma, etc. Here are some pictures related to Eid al-Fitr. Now let us move to one more exciting festival called Christmas. Christmas is celebrated on the birthday of Lord Jesus. It is celebrated every year on December 25th. This is the most important festival for the Christian community living in India. On the occasion, great preparations are done. Churches and Christmas trees are decorated. Santa Claus and other seasonal figures are organized. One and family reunion and exchange of gifts and sweets are common. One would then mix cakes, puddings, pick and pipe, donuts, etc. on the dinner table. Here are some pictures related to Christmas. Now let us move to one more festival, the Shara. The Shara is one of the most important festival of Hindu community. In or it is also known as Vijayadashmi as Lord Ram killed Ravan on this day according to hindu calendar it falls on the 10th day of ashwin month it spreads the message of good over evil in most part of the in country dramas are organized in the city showing the story of ramayana on the day of the shara and the effigies of ravan his son meenath and his brother kumkan are burnt to signify the victory of good over evil During this time of year, many people observe fast. Most famous food of this time are sabana na kishri, sabana na kheer, sandesh, imarti, and many more. Now let us move. Let now let us see some pictures related to the shara. Rakshabandhan Rakshabandhan is one of the famous festivals of Hindus it is also called the Rakhi festival according to Hindu calendar it falls on the fourth moon day of the month of Shravan Rakshabandhan means the bond of protection on this day a sister ties a special band called Rakhi on his brother's wrist as mark of a mark of his brother This thread is called Rakhi. In exchange, a brother takes a lifetime pledge to take care of her sister and save her from any kind of evil. One more one and miss I food items like barfi, laddu, especially khewar on this day. Here are some pictures related to Raksha Bandhan. Now, let us move to another exciting festival called Pongal. Pongal is the most popular harvest festival of southern India. it it is a four day long festival marking the movement of sun towards the northern hemisphere called as uttarayan the preparation of the main dish pogal starts early in the morning when people wear their traditional attires and the houses are decorated with floral design called kolam made with um, made with powdered rice pongal is prepared with rice dal jaggery dry fruit sugar and milk which are cooked in an open cooked in open in an clay pot in more in the northern part of the country people celebrate makar sankranti in the western part patangotsav and in the eastern part bihu on the same day 14th or 15th january here are some pictures related to pongal
Now, for the conclusion, I would like to say food and festivals are just way to enjoy the course of life and teaches us to forget our differences and live with unity, peace and harmony with our diversity. In short, they fill our lives with colors and enthusiasm. Thank you so much. Hope you like it. Thank you so much, Jayant and Aditya, for this wonderful presentation. Now, I would like to ask Ms. Tutu and her students, if you guys have any query or question, you can ask us. I think we don't have question, Mr. Finney. Thank you. Then I would like to hand it over to you, Ms. Putu. Okay, so thank you. The beautiful presentations from your students. Over to you, Ms. Putu. Okay, now uh, we will continue. Uh, presented by Kema. Yeah, you can present Kema. Okay, Miss. Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm glad to meet you here today in International Virtual Cultural Exchange. I hope you well there in India in situation of COVID-19. Uh, before we go, let, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Kema Devi and this is... I'm Amelia Chatarina and you can call me Amel. Uh, now I'm gonna tell you about Balinese food and drink. There are many food and drink you can find it in Bali. But now I'm tell you about uh, the popular one, food and drink. Hey. Next. The, the first one is ayam betutu or betutu chicken. This is a typical Balinese food named ayam betutu. Betutu is a type of traditional Balinese food whose raw materials are whole ducks and chicken. The word betutu comes from tunu, which means grilled, and be means meal. From based on the betutu means grilled meat. Betutu chicken made from chicken that covered with Balinese spices known as basaganap. On the entire surface of the chicken, then it boiled or grilled until it has a distinctive smell. According to traditional Balinese, betutu chicken is usually served during traditional ceremonies such as marriage, otonan, or odalan. It can also a dish or you can sold it. One of the betutu producers is in Gianyara Gensi in Mil Malinge village. Betutu chicken can also find at Klungkung. This is Gianyar. Next. The second one is sate lilit. This special serving is very different with the general sate. The word of lilit means wrap in Balinese and it means that the sate is wrapped around this keyword. You can use the ingredients such as pork, chicken, or fish. If you are Muslim, you can choose fish or chicken. And uh, then the main ingredient, this main ingredient, it chopped, then mixed with grated coconut, coconut milk, lime, red onion, and pepper. Based ingredient are pork, chicken, or fish. When you already mix all the ingredients, then wrap on a skewer. Uh, you can find from lemongrass, 
or bamboo or sugar cane. Originally, it came from Kungkung, but now you can find it on Bandung, Gianyar, or Denpasar Regency. Satelilet is also a food that is in the offerings of Balinese Hindu people at traditional ceremonies. One of them is the Charu ceremony, which aims to maintain the balance of the universe and as a form of respect for the gods of the Hindu community in Bali. Next. Now it's my, now it's my turn to explain about Balinese food. So the next one is tom. Tom is one of the meals prepared by Hindu in Bali during on the day before galungan, or we, we usually call it penampahan galungan. The meaning of tom is wrapped. In the making on this food, you can put the mixture between meat and other ingredients in banana leaves that already was before. And then you can steam it. Next. The next one is lawar. Lawar is an Indonesian dish created from a mixture of vegetables, coconut, and minced meat mixed with rich herbs and spices originating from Bali, Indonesia. This dish is commonly found in restaurants and warungs in Bali. Despite its rich vegetable mixture, lawar is not a vegetarian dish since most often it is mixed with minced meat or even blood. Next. There are type of lawar. The first one is white lawar. The second is pork lawar. The third is red lawar. The fourth is turtle lawar. The last one is chicken lawar. Next. The first one is white lawar or lawar putih. Lawar putih is a food made from the main ingredients of coconut and it's usually mixed with long beans. Next. Pork lawar or lawar babi. Pork lawar use the main ingredients of pork. Next. Red lawar or lawar merah. Red lawar is lawar that use blood as a mixture. Next. Tartar lawar or lawar penyu using turtle meat as the main ingredient. But for the environmental preservation, it is advisable not to use turtle meat unless it is really for ceremonial purpose. Next. Chicken lawar or lawar ayam using the main ingredients from chicken. Next. The next one is babi guling or roasted pig. In Bali, babi guling is one of the most famous cultural dishes and babi guling was originally made as a ceremonial of ceremonial offering to the Balinese Hindu gods with the pig surf whole to present perfection and abundant grace to the gods. You can find the roasted pig in restaurant and warrants in Bali too. Next. And then we can find Lola Cham Cham. Lola Cham Cham is a traditional herbal drink which is usually come consumed by Balinese people to keep the body fit and feel fresh. Loloh Cham Cham is one of herbal drink in Bali. Loloh means herbal drink and Cham Cham means Cham Cham leaves or crunching leaves. In general, the material of this herb is turmeric and curcuma, but there is one village who the main material is from Cham Cham leaves. 
that is Panglipuran Village. If you come to Bali, you must invite the you must invite the Panglipuran Village. You must go to Panglipuran Village. Kecamcam leaves are known as dab dab leaves can reduce body head temperature, high blood pressure, and this digestive disorders. So it's good for health. Next, and then we can find daluman ice or as daluman in Indonesian language. Daluman is one of favorite drink in Bali. It is made from green grass jelly leaves. This leaves is often frosted because of its delicious taste and like jelly. Uh, there are two types of green grass jelly. The first one is the leaves are broad and hairy. And then the second is the leaves are small and thick. There are many benefits if you consume this drink like it can reduce hypertension indigestion fever and can be in diet program in you next that's all about our presentation thank you for your attention and goodbye means to take Okay, thank you, Kema and Amel. Now we'll be continued by Tasha and Najwa. Okay, Tasha and Najwa. Hello, it is a very great opportunity for me to be here explaining to you all about something wonderful in Bali. My name is Putra Natasha Angelina Putri, and I'm from Vocational High School to Denpasar. And yes, I'm from Bali, Indonesia. If we talk about Bali, well, Bali is a very, very beautiful island to me, and I love Bali so much. It brings something wonderful, attractive, and also fantastic to everyone who visits Bali. It has something, um, it has so many cultures, foods, festivals, arts, monuments, and also events. And today, I would like to tell you guys about one of the most exciting festivals in Bali. Next. And it's called the Bali, Bali Spirit Festival. But before we start, I have one question for you. Do you like to do yoga or do you like to dance? Or listening for some healing and relaxing music? Next. If you do like the same too, well, Bali is the home of the Bali Spirit Festival, one of the largest yoga festivals in the world that takes place every year around March or April in Ubud, the spiritual center of Bali. It is a festival for everyone, for singles and groups, children, teens, families, experienced yoga, yogis, and beginners alike. Next. First of all, Bali Spirit Festival is a yoga festival. International and local presenters teach sessions in both classical styles and new fusion styles. Some presenters focus on heading up your body, others on restoring or chakra balancing. Whatever it is, all aim to share the knowledge, their energy, and their spirit with the festival attendees and for the greater good. Next. The goal of the Bali Spirit Festival are first, To awaken and nourish each individual's potential for positive change within. And the second is leading to positive change in our homes, in our communities, and around the world. Next. Through the beneficial and inspirational traditions of yoga, dance, and music, the Bali Spirit Festival embodies the balance in the concept of three hitakarana, living in harmony with our spiritual, social, and natural environments. Next. The Bali Spirit Festival was found by three people who were very instrumental in it. 
there are first Kadek Gunarta as a festival co-founder and cultural liaison. The second is Robert Weber as a co-founder and musical director. And as you can see, the beautiful lady over there, yes, she is Megan Pepperheim as a director of the Bali Spirit Group and executive producer of the Bali Spirit Festival. Next. And what to expect from the Bali Spirit Festival? First, top presenters from all over the world. At the Bali Spirit Festival, there are almost 200 presenters from around the world that have been teaching yoga and meditation, dance and, dance and movement, personal development, and also healing and breath work. Next. The second is music and songs everywhere. Music is the heart and soul of the festival, and the beats and the tunes are ever present. And the third is super healthy and delicious food. All the yoga will make you hungry, but fear not, the available food at the Bali Spirit Festival is amazing. Expect yummy vegetarian and vegan fare from the most popular restaurants in Uber. Next. Next. And last but not least, well, this is my favorite things. Yes. One of the most. Uh, no. I'm sorry. And last but not least, uh, this is my favorite things. Yes. New global connections. One of the most exciting things about the Bali Spirit Festival is that it is truly international. You will meet people from all over the world, from your beautiful yoga teachers, hippies and their base age, healers and tourists, normal yogis like you and me. It is a truly global event and you get to share your ideas and your dreams with the world. If you're curious about the festival, well, I have one video to pay your curious. So here it is. For you, the highlights of Bali Spirit Festival. March or April, well, you need to carry up yourself to this attractive festival. I hope this pandemic will be end on 2021, so we can do all the things we want to do without feeling worried. So that's all for me. I hope you learn and get something from this. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Tasia, with a great presentation. Okay, now we'll continue by Najwa. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Najwa from 10th grade of Vocational High School to Denpasar, majoring in tourism. Now, I will tell you about something interesting about Bali, Denpasar, which has a festival that is held every year end, namely the Denpasar Festival. First, I will explain briefly about the city of Denpasar. Denpasar City. Denpasar is the capital city of Bali Province, Indonesia. Denpasar is the large city in the Nusa Tenggara Island and the second large city in eastern Indonesia after Makassar. The growth of the tourism industry on the island of Bali has pushed the city of Denpasar to become the center of business activity and has positioned the city as an area with high per capita income and growth in Bali Province. Next. 
Next. Dan Pasar Festival. Dan Pasar Festival or Den Fest is a cultural art festival that is held as a venue for various expression of cultural arts, both traditional, modern, and even guard that fulfill at least six aspects, including display, sell, inspire, transform, entertain, and educate. Dan Pasar Festival or Den Fest was originally called the Gajah Mada Town Festival with watch which was held for the first time in 2008 because it is located on Jalan Gajah Mada dan Pasar. Dan Pasar Festival was initiated by Ana Agung Gede Murah Puspa Yoga. Next. This year, for the first time, the festival was held online and lasted for three months from October to December 2020. There were various activities in this year, Then fest with 189 events with 407 creative communities, including food festival, craft, fashion and exhibition, virtual fashion show, Mubarung film, Mayor's Cup creative competition, poetry visualization, one round drama, then fest photo easy competition 2020, then fest sketch competition 2020, virtual abu competition, storytelling, lead art competition, music battle, photography workshop, keramik workshop, and an and FNB workshop. Next. The concept applied in in the in the Den Pasar Festival this year. The concept of Siwanata Raja and Munde Bayu was also promoted as the spirit of working. Siwanata Raja is Siwa who is depicted in a dancing pose. Siva is believed to be a god who dances all cosmic consciousness. Therefore, Siwa is believed to be the source of a beautiful dance. Lord Siwa is believed to be the source from which the awareness and creativity of, of art spread or ngeba and sublimes to it or ngingkes. For the mortal world, Lord Siwa dance for prosperity, prosperity and peace. In the higher phase, Siwa dance to release the individual soul from all illusory circles. Next. There is a teaser video about the Pasar Festival. Okay, it's over. Next. Thank you for your attention. I hope you all understand what I explained. And have a nice day, everyone. Okay, thank you, Najwa. Now we will be continued by Nisa. Okay, Nisa, you can present. Oke, okay, Oke, hello everyone. My name is Nilo Putinisa Pramisi Dewi. You can call me Nisa for short. I am 11th grade of accounting majority of student pastor vocational high school. So, I'm gonna give you my Presentation about Bolinus Cultural about Trunyan Symmetry. Okay, next. So, what is Trunyan Symmetry? Next. Trunyan Symmetry is the name for a unique burial system where bodies are not buried or cremated, but are only placed on the ground. 
different from the funeral system in Bali, which generally use the cremation system, or we call it as ngaben. The corpse are magically did not give a smell because the smell that came out from the corpse is absorbed by the big tree there. A light tree growing in the grave, it is called tarumenyan, or in English is frankincense tree. The frankincense tree emits an unique aroma which serves to disgust the smell of the corpse. Next. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about a short story or short legend about Kenya village and cemetery. It is according of you all if you believe in that or not, but it is our mythology. There is a legend about Tarumanyan tree in Trunyan village, Bali. In ancient times, the fragrance of Tarumanyan was able to hypnotize four brothers from the Surakarta Palace who were traveling across the ocean. As a result, the four people finally arrived at Trinian village. Unexpectedly, the eldest of four siblings fell in love with a goddess who was the guardian of the Tarumanyan tree. The two of them finally married and founded a small kingdom in the village of Trinian Bali. And the eldest prince with a small kingdom named Ratu Sakti Pancering Jagat. In his leadership, he also felt that the fragrant smell of Tarumanyan could endanger Trunyan village. Finally, he also said that the corpse were no longer buried, but lived there than the Tarumanyan. Since then, the fragrance of Tarumanyan has stopped spreading, and at the same time, the corpse that were laid on the ground have not grown. Next. So what it so where is Trunyan village located? Next. Trunyan cemetery located in Trunyan village on the west of Mount Abang and on the western of Better Lake. You can see it in the presentation, but I think it's too small. Okay, next. Okay, we're gonna talk about how about funeral system in Trinian. Next. Funeral system in Trinian. In this village, there are three graves area or sema based on three types of death. If the cause of the that is not normal, such an incident, suicide, death of a person, the corpse will be placed in a location called a small bantas. And the last, to bury babies and small children, or resident who are older but not married or unmarried, it will be placed in a small muda or in Indonesia, is called rumah miarta yasa. Next. Italy, three house from Denpasar. The location is less on the small village in Batur. One can only reach this site by boat, a small village of which awaits visitor at the end of a wooden jetty with the sunning of one Batur's looks on. And the second, crossing the lake to the Trunyan takes between 20 until 30 minutes and you can arrival a small huddle of men awaits by any arriving boat. Next. So it's the video.
Yeah. Okay, thank you, Nisa. Now we'll be continue. Is the last Amari. Okay, come on, Amari, you can present. Okay, Miss. Okay, be patient because uh, with uh, the connection, uh, so still find the PowerPoint will be so. Yeah, it okay. minutes. Marie, you can uh, introduce yourself first. Okay, your camera. Mm -hmm. Um, hello everyone, my name is Nila Putu Amari Hitagraha. Uh, you can call me Amari or Tata for short. Okay, good evening everyone. Today I'll be presenting about Ngaben. Um, I'll be presenting about Ngaben today. Now for the table of contents, we have firstly, what is Ngaben? Second, what do they prepare to celebrate Ngaben? Third, what's so unique about Ngaben? And fourth is closing. Now, firstly, what is Ngaben? Ngaben is a Balinese sacred ceremonial ritual. It is it's a cremation ceremony where families send off disease known to enter the next life. In Hindu, Ngaben means to separate the soul from the body, which is done in this ritual through cremation. Now, what to prepare? Uh, before the main ceremony begins, family members of the disease prepare a wooden ox or a temple structure that is used to hold the bodies that are eventually burned. As the wooden ox or temple structure is carried to the crem cremation site, Balinese will try to confuse the disease spirit to make sure it doesn't find its way back home. Next. Now, during the process of Ngaben. Firstly, Balinese shake the temple, spin it around, throw things at it, and it will not carry it in a straight line, simply to confuse the spirit. Second, families go through a series of rituals conducted by a priest. Third, after completing the rituals, the wooden ox is set on fire, sending the deceased off to their next life. And lastly, families pick up the ashes and remainings, then spreading them into the ocean. Next. Now, this is a video of uh, them shaking the temple. Next. And this is a video of uh, them setting the ox on fire. And uh, next. And this is the family members releasing the remainings into the ocean. Next. 
Now, what's so unique about this event? Unlike other death ceremonies, Naban is celebrated merrily by the Balinese as the ceremony shows that family members have completed their duty. Next. There should be not any there should not be any tears of sadness as Balinese believe that it will hinder the spirit reaching their next life. Next. Uh, that's all I have to present here today. Thank you for the opportunity and have a good day. Okay, thank you, Amari. No, uh, that's all about my presentation, Mr. Finney. Maybe you have a question? Mr. Finney Kumar, maybe you have a question? Hello, Mr. Vinay Kumar. Yeah, that's all uh, the presentation from my student. Maybe you, you and your student, uh, Indian student, you can ask the question if you want to say or uh, to make question for me and my student. Joan Jasmine, maybe you want to say something. Vivek Kumar. Okay. Yes, Thanks. yes, uh, I'm here. And yeah. I'm sure the students would be happy and glad to see these presentations, all the fine detailings. And again, I'm saying the presentations were so beautiful, so fantabulous. Your students were presenting so good that uh, I didn't feel like I'm in a virtual exchange i felt that uh, like they are so natural in their school environment and in their classroom it felt so good yeah, <laughs> yeah thank it, you seriously i i was feeling like i am a chief guest and i'm just watching the presentation was so good all the students are enjoying and it's it was so fantabulous i cannot uh, have the words to praise especially each and every student was so prepared the preparedness was evident so I would like to ask if any of my students have any question, they can ask. Oh, yes. So me too, my, my student didn't have the question. Guys, do you have anything to say? OK. My student, maybe you want to say something? I guess Ranjita have to say something. Ranjita, do you want to say something? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I wanted to say that your presentations were so good. I really enjoyed uh, learning about your culture. Thank you so much, Ranjita. Thank you so much, Ranjita. We from Balinese student. Tasya, you want to say something? Oh, thank you. Okay. So in the last, I would like to ask if any of the Indonesian or Indian student would like to say something, then we are ready to hear or we are going to conclude today's international virtual exchange program, India and Indonesia. Yes. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. So uh, let me. Yeah, it was such a great presentation by Indonesian students. I like that. Thank you, Fifek. Maybe someday the student from India can come to Bali. Yeah? Sure. Thank you, Vivek, and thank you so much, Ms. Putu. Now, we have reached the end of today's International Virtual Cultural Exchange in VICE 2020, India, Indonesia. I feel so glad and so lucky to say you thank you from the bottom of my heart that 
all the Indonesian students and Ms. Putu are present with us in this international virtual cultural exchange through Google Meet and sharing the beautiful topics, cultures, food, festival, art, monuments to with us in such a presentable and beautiful way that it is going to ever last in our golden memories. We cannot forget this meet anytime because it has been one of the memorable ones. I would like to say a heartfelt thank you to Ms. Putu for accepting this invitation of International Virtual Cultural Exchange. And I would also like to thank all the Indonesian students for their hard work, dedication, and beautiful presentations. Students, I'm so proud that all of you presented in such a good way. Also, last but not the least, I would like to thank all my Indian students that they have participated and presented with me in this program. Their hard work and dedication is of no comparison, and I'm proud of all the students who are participating in this meet. Thank you all. You have made us proud. Ms. Putu, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, from me too, and my student, Balnis student, Indonesian student, uh, thank you for your invitation to to do uh, to make this uh, virtual culture uh, uh, will be done be good and I hope we still keep in touch. Uh, maybe our student, my student, and your student can still keep in touch. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The same like uh, from me and my student. Uh, from my deep of heart, uh, we ha you have invited uh, me, uh, Mr. Finney, to do this virtual cultural. Okay, uh, that's good presentation too. Uh, nice presentation from your student. Thank you. I think it's thank enough. You. Thank you, Ms. Putu. And thank you, everyone. And here we conclude our today's meeting the program of Invoice 2020.